The following video will be spoiling the entirety of Lester the Unlikely for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. If you want to play it yourself, note that it'll either take a little patience or a guide to get through, but it's a solid game and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. If you've clicked onto this video, odds are you know what the word Ludo Narrative means. But just in case you don't, let's go over it quickly. Ludo Narrative in basic terms is the story and narrative pulled out and presented by the gameplay, mechanics, and presentation thereof. It's very important to distinguish Ludo narrative from the traditional narrative, in Lester's case the cutscenes and dialogue, as these factors happen isolated from the gameplay. I myself have mostly seen the term used in the phrase Ludo narrative dissonance, a criticism that the gameplay and plot of a game contradict or don't support one another. If you want to further explore this word and its meaning before we continue, there's a couple videos in the description for you to check out. With that said, I'm here today to tell you Lester the Unlikely is an impeccable case of harmonic and illustrative Ludo narrative. So what kind of story does Lester the Unlikely want to tell and more importantly how is it illustrated through its gameplay, mechanics, and level design? Our story begins with a nerd named Lester accidentally boarding a boat only for it to get raided by pirates. Having to abandon ship, Lester washes up on the shore of an unknown tropical island. And here's where the gameplay begins. The first thing you'll notice is that Lester isn't like your average video game protagonist. He's built different. Built weaker, hesitant, and pretty incapable. While other protagonists can jump several times their height and easily traverse platforms, Lester is only able to reach with all his might just to reach a ledge not too far above his head. And when he grabs hold, he has to slowly and ungracefully pull himself up, grunting as he does so. While other protagonists can dispose of dangerous enemies with ease, Lester can barely fight off very slow and mundane animals, much slower and smaller than himself. While other protagonists never hesitate to do whatever the player wants, Lester will hesitate and whimper in front of intimidating obstacles, and in some cases he'll outright run away against the player's wishes, ripping control away from the player for a few seconds. Lester is very clearly not an aspirational figure, but a relatable one. If anything, he's probably less capable than you or I. The animations and sound effects really sell how much time and effort Lester has to put in just to get measly results. But they are results nonetheless. The most obvious criticism of this game is that players don't want to struggle against the controls. They want to self insert into some big strong manly men like Super Mario and Sonic the Hedgehog. But if a liberating control scheme is a must have for video games, why is Dark Souls so popular? Lester is a wimp, but he has all the tools he'll need to get by. But the beach is a very straightforward challenge. The following cave is built to be a bit confusing, but even if some challenges confuse or frustrate you, they can easily be worked around. More important than Lester's physical abilities is the player's ability to be resourceful, and not to be afraid to push Lester to his limits. It can be very satisfying to get accustomed to and overcome challenges with this limited skill set. The falling graveyard level is one that looks spooky and difficult, but if Lester remains patient and understands his limits, victory will be his. And that's really the thesis for this game's story. Lester is far more capable than he first appears. He is capable more than he knows. But more important is for Lester to remain vigilant and not get cocky. The next level is a tribal village. Here Lester meets Tika, daughter of the tribe's leader Hector, whom Lester must find in order to get back home. But the pirates who attacked the freighter in the beginning of the game has set up base on the island and are now holding Hector hostage. It's here where Lester makes an uncharacteristic declaration. Gee, that's terrible. I've got to rescue your father. Leave it to me, Lester the Heroic. After overcoming obstacles, Lester is gaining confidence and the dorky title he gave himself made me crack a smile. But Tika isn't buying his bravado. More like Lester the Unlikely! You can hardly take care of yourself! How could you possibly rescue anyone else? Tika dejects our protagonist, but that only fuels the fire in Lester's soul. He's gonna prove that nagging woman wrong. Tika warns Lester to stay on the rooftops to avoid the other villagers, as they may mistake him for a pirate. So Lester does just that and... The hatred for Caucasians! I can't even handle it. I wake up every morning and I just cry at the edge of my bed and my wife says to me, what's wrong, honey, what's wrong? And I said, the hatred for Caucasians, it's just weighing down on me. Oh. 
no one likes me cause I'm Caucasian. Oh, oh I read a BuzzFeed article that hurt my feelings. Oh, oh I Bitch ass white boy. Now, it's possible to avoid this outcome with either careful footing or foresight, but most players will unknowingly fall into what seems like an unfair trap. But looking at the previous cutscene, Lester got cocky. He called himself heroic, even though he has yet to save anyone. And if the player doesn't stay careful, they will fall victim to hubris as well. This applies to the stages going forward. Don't think you're out of the woods just because you outwitted the guard and stole his keys. Story and gameplay are one. The following raft and jungle levels begin testing Lester's courage. Through putting him on a raft he has no control over, and through introducing the vine swinging mechanics. Lester is continuing to push his limits and expand his abilities, ending with the first proper boss fight and Lester obtaining his first reusable weapon, a trusty boomerang. After defeating the gorilla, Tika begins to acknowledge Lester's growing chadhood. We now see two key differences in Lester's animations. The first being the aforementioned boomerang. Before, Lester's weapons were merely rocks to be flung. But with this boomerang, we see a modicum of skill and finesse in his hands. The second is Lester's run animation. It's no longer the embarrassing arm flailing skedaddle. Our boy is now composed and using proper jogging form. Which he will need for this next section, which happens to be my favorite in the whole game. The leopard chase is the most mechanically satisfying challenge of the game. You have to outrun a terrifying predator while jumping on and off vines in quick succession, with one mistake being the difference between life and death. Not even a mistake, failing to perform jump in the fastest most effective way once or twice is enough of a failure for the leopard to catch you. Naturally, after struggling and overcoming such a challenge, the player will feel triumph, satisfaction, and relief. And why shouldn't they? Hell, I certainly did. And I died 15 seconds later getting crushed by the boulders blocking the next stage. Remember, don't get cocky. It's the greatest test of skill in the game and by far the most potent example of this excellent Ludo narrative. Afterwards, there's some tough challenges in the cavern. None as hard as the leopard, but I had a great deal of fun with them. Especially the weird water monster thing, it was a pretty unique challenge. You can almost see the developers trying to push Lester's clumsy controls to the limit in order to make fun traditional challenges. Lester has transformed into an exceptional young man before our eyes. He's becoming less relatable and more aspirational. And this is illustrated in the final level of the game, the pirate ship. The pirate enemies aren't that much of a threat. As long as Lester is patient, he can take them on one at a time. It's almost too easy in fact. This sudden decrease in difficulty is accompanied by a shift in the music. It sounds almost like a parade, like Lester is just taking a victory lap. But of course it ends with a puzzle. One with two answers, one of which is a red herring and the other which will cost you a life. So even at the end where Lester can take on waves of pirates with ease, he has to remain vigilant and use his noggin. After saving Hector, Lester is gifted with a surfboard, which he can use to ride home and eventually find himself a pair of babes to share his amazing adventures with. And that's Lester the Unlikely. You might be wondering what's so great about it. After all, this story just sounds like the plot of some dumb B-movie where the nerd becomes the hero. But the beauty of it is in how it can convey the bulk of that story through gameplay. The text and cutscenes are hardly necessary, only there to elaborate and clarify. I think it's beautiful when a story can be so effectively illustrated through gameplay. If Lester can teach us anything, it's that you can find something to appreciate even in the most unlikely of places. Thank you all for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and in fact, if this video gets 500 likes, I'll make a follow-up called Lester the Unlikely and the White Savior Complex.